Hey, everybody, and welcome to Learning from Smart People. I am your host, Rob Oliver, and I appreciate you being with me today. My guest today is Allison Prophet. She has a background in human resources, operations, sales, marketing, and a tremendous life journey. Or, um, you know, I say a tremendous life journey. Let, let me explain what I mean by that. Um, she's got an amazing story. Maybe tremendous isn't the right word to use here, okay? Um, she moved nine times in the course of two years. She was fired four times, started her business four times, and got a divorce in the middle of all of that. She takes all of those experiences um, from business and life and has become a life and business coach who helps business owners and leaders bring more joy into what they do and how they do it. Allison, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Rob, so much for having me. I'm really excited to have this chat. Uh, you bet. So let's do this. Tell me a little bit about that backstory. Like your story is fascinating and um, one that, okay, not everybody can relate to directly as in having moved all of those times, having done all of those, had all of those fairly negative experiences, but we can all relate to the fact that there are just times when it, at, when it rains, it pours. So talk to me about your backstory, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So I always like to say that my backstory started off really simply. Um, I was really in the midst of my HR career when I decided that I wanted to start moving in the direction of taking the steps to start my own business. And in the midst of that, I went through a uh, coaching certification program. And in that program, one of the things that they really start to do is talk about how important it is to be um, have a vision and and really imagine things um, that seem totally unlikely. And so in the visioning exercise that I did the very first weekend of this experience, I had this vision that I wasn't living in Pennsylvania anymore, which is where I'm originally from, and that I was no longer working in the HR field and um, that I was doing my business full time, which at that point, that was a really far away dream. And this visioning was a kind of the format of imagine a year from now today, and you write your vision out in that lens. And fast forward to when I finished my program, which was about I would say like maybe like nine months later and um, I found myself getting let go from my HR job and I had never been on the quote unquote other side of the table. This was a very, very um, just abnormal situation for me um, and I found myself being in this place of like, huh, really curious, like why is this happening for me? How is this getting me to what I said I wanted? Um, sometimes when we put out visions and goals for ourselves, we have these plans, right? We make plans for our life and uh, whatever your belief system is, it's like, you know, we think we're the one that's in control of it all. And so when something happens that's not in accordance with our plan, we <clears throat> sometimes get mad or we try to take even more control or we go down into victim world. And I found myself because I was just on the heels of this really transformative training program, trying to just apply all the principles and tools and skills that I had. Um, because again, my life was just pretty solid and happy. I was just on an upward career track mobility and in, in the HR field. And I didn't really have a whole lot of like life stuff happen. Um, and I thought, okay, like maybe this is just the first of those things. And that's, that was in January, 2017. And in April 2017 is the first move and my husband at the time and I decided to move across the country to California mm. to do a work exchange opportunity. We just were looking to shake up our life a little bit. In hindsight, I like to say it sort of was the end, the beginning of the end of our relationship, right? So really moved into this place of just radical open curiosity. I had never lived 50 miles from where I was born in Pennsylvania. And so moving across the country to live with a stranger with not really much of a game plan, it sounds so irresponsible when I say it now, 
but it really was just a leap of faith and it was a catalyst for a lot of other things and so many adventures and so many hardships and all of those things as they were happening. I always could have come back home to Pennsylvania and had a safe place to land. But I think when we live safely, we tend to not really get what we're looking for. Um, And living safely isn't always most joyful. We're holding ourselves back from really great experiences potentially. Um, And so, yeah, there were multiple job losses. I actually also had two career changes within there. The moves were, um, a lot of them were just like different addresses, but moving is moving, right? It's disrupting and there's just all kinds of things that you have to do when you move. And um, there was just a lot of ups and downs and looking back on it, there were a lot of downs, but all of those were so formative and I really wouldn't change any of them, including the not so savory things that happened within my my marriage. But I think all of those things have created a, um, a a story that people resonate with little bits and parts of it. And that's how you grow connection. That's how you grow business. Um, and my philosophy in HR was always that you have to bring, <clears throat> allow the whole human to show up at work. And so I feel as though all of my own different life um, stories that I've gathered along the way have allowed me to see why allowing humans to be their whole selves, no matter where they go, why that's so important. Because there were a lot of times where I felt so lost, broken, and messy. And um, sometimes it wasn't easy to find the places where people would open their arms and hold me safely to like be able to show up and do whatever it is um, that I was trying to do in the world. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I want to key on something you said it kind of in the middle there. You talked about living in a world where you play it safe, okay? Um, and there's the cliche, which is go big or go home. Um, and, uh, you know, there are, uh, let me just use baseball as an analogy, okay? I'll try to keep up. All right, so there are people who hit for average, but they only, they only hit singles. Okay. And so, you know, they, they hit, they, they hit the ball well, but they're only going to first base every time that they hit. Then there's people and they've got power and they are swinging for the fences every time they don't hit as often, but when they did, when they do, they hit big. Um, A lot of times, like you need both kinds of people um, people who are productive, but consistent, productive. And then you need people who are a little bit more risk takers. And, um, you know, when they hit, they hit big. Can you talk to me, uh, like, how does that resonate with you? And can you talk a little bit more about the idea of what's the balance between playing it safe and I mean, just for lack of a better term, being stupid. Mm, Yeah. Well, so I'm going to bring the word joy back into it. Um, I really believe that for most people, um, and this is based on conversations with people when I worked in HR all the way to today, where I do a lot of work with leaders and business owners, most people's goal is that they want to feel joyful in life or they want to feel peaceful. And so the important component of, well, how do we get there? I I like to say it's important to know what your values are because your values are the coordinate points to the joy and the peace. Now your values can shift over time, right? So if you understand what your values are and those are the coordinates to getting to where you're looking to go, then you tune into what I call intuition, or some people call it the Holy Spirit, or whatever that thing is, that's that unseen thing you feel in your body. Often that intuition is trying to get your attention to the fact that you're off, you're off point with your coordinates, you're off point with your, with your values. 
And so if you are tuning into your values and really, really paying attention to them, that's where you can avoid stupidity, right? And, and so, and I don't like to say that there's any right or wrong decisions because perhaps you had to make that mistake. Perhaps, perhaps like your biggest, most important life lesson came out of that. So the, the importance is to not live too much in the rear view mirror and looking at the past and looking at the mistakes you made and shaming yourself and judging yourself over those things and just saying, well, those happened. What did I learn from it? Where am I today? And what does going forward look like? So I, I, I think there definitely is, I mean, listen, I've made some decisions that I'm like, that, that, that wasn't aligned if I really, really look at it. And if I'm honest and it, it takes that sort of radical self-acceptance to really own where we maybe didn't honor ourselves, where we didn't really honor, um, you know, what we really truly wanted to do, what really felt aligned with our values and it, letting go of the shame of, you know, this was a dumb decision. It's like always going back to your values is the best way to assess that. Um, yeah, I made some dumb decision for sure, d- dumb decisions for sure, but I, I learned from all of them. So that's the thing. It's like, you can make a decision and it can go horribly wrong. And then you get to assess, well, now what do I do? Life is just one big giant experiment, right? You, you make a decision, you take the action, and then you say, how did that go? Right. A scientist doesn't say like, oh, that's dumb. I quit the field. They're like, oh, let's go back to the drawing board with the findings that we had and create a new experiment. OK, I, I love I love what you're saying from this viewpoint. Um, when we do make mistakes, when we do when we do things that don't work out, it may not have been a mistake. It may have just been something that happened um, that we misread the market or whatever the situation is. Right. Uh, what you're saying is it's not making a judgment value about that uh, or a value judgment would be the proper terms. Uh, yes. You're not, you're not valuing it. You're saying, what do I learn from this? Right. And so everything is a learning opportunity rather than a statement about your own intelligence or a statement about your own worth. Does that, did I summarize what you're saying? Yes, totally. Okay. Uh, and I, I just, I'm curious about this because I, you mentioned joy as being something that people are seeking in their life. Is joy something that applies to your business as well? Oh, absolutely. I like to say that how you do anything is how you do everything. Okay. Tell me more about that. <clears throat> so if you think about, and before we got on this call, we were talking about Albert Einstein, right? And just like the, like the, you know, just energy and the concept of energy. Energy is everything. Energy is the sound waves that you're hearing on this podcast. Energy is the keynote speaker sign behind you. Energy is this cup of coffee, right? Everything is energy. Your feelings are energy. And, and energy is this intangible thing that is happening in your body. Like there's hormonal responses that are triggered by the thoughts that you have. And then those hormonal responses create physiological things in your body. And then that creates action or creates no action. If you're, you know, having thoughts that are kind of down at creating the chemical responses that are more depression oriented. So how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you are having um, thoughts about something in your business and you're like, oh, I really hate marketing. Oh, I really hate sales. Oh, I really don't want to go to this networking thing. Um, Or I don't like working with this client or whatever. Like all the things that you say you don't like, you're kind of bringing that energy into it. And so if, if you are able to figure out that like, And this is even true in the workplace, not just small business owners. Like this is informed from the work I did in HR. When you are able to create a sense of in the workplace, they call it culture, right? Like it's an intangible thing. So if there is a feeling, a sense of being loved and held and cared for and supported, joy tends to come out of that. And then you feel that. If you think about the greatest brands out there, 
that um, people really resonate with a brand, there's something intangible. It's because they're really trying to make very conscious decisions around all of the things related to that brand. That's why brands nowadays that are more conscious in how they do their business, not just what they do, but all of the ways that they do what they do, that is something that's going to really filter into it. And then you feel it. It's such an intangible thing. And so I really believe that when you are able to, I like to say joy is the best business strategy because maybe you don't love sales, for example, because you have all of these limiting beliefs around what it means to do sales. And there's lots of ways to do sales. Sales is just relationship building. Sales is serving your audience. Sales is an act of connecting. Um, I like to say sales is actually just an act of your top value. So for me, my top value is connecting. So if I'm looking at sales as just an act of connecting, that changes your whole perception of what it is. And then I can bring joy into it because I'm just being in my top value. And so what I love to do with my clients is really help them understand like, what's the root story behind why you don't like certain things in your business. Maybe you're not supposed to be doing those things in your business, or maybe you're not supposed to be doing them in the way that you think you're supposed to be doing them. How do we kind of re-engineer them so that they align with your values? And they're made, it's not just coaching that I do. I bring in consulting and training because perhaps there's just some training that's missing. And because I have that background in all of those different fields, I'm able to really bring that lens in to say, hey, maybe the way that you're trying to do it just doesn't align with the value. Let's figure out that mismatch. And then we'll figure out how can you do it so that it does feel really joyful because when you feel joyful about it, there's this unseen energy and then people feel that and then they get drawn into them. They're like, what is that? I don't know why I like this person, but I want to have some conversation. I'm curious about them. We just get drawn to people just like Rob, our first connection. We were connected through a mutual person who really enjoyed their experience with you. And I enjoy my experience with that person. So by virtue of the energetic exchange that you and Dave had, our connection was already starting from this really great high vibration spot. And then we found out we had a lot of interesting commonalities and interests. And so that's just a real example of how you do anything is how you do everything. Your energy precedes you. Got it. Uh, Okay. Uh, Help me out a little bit with this. Okay. You've been talking about joy a lot. Can you give me a definition of joy? Is joy... A lot of people look at joy and happiness. Are, are they the same? Are they different? Like, what does like what does joy mean to you? And what and how are you bringing that to your clients and, and to what they're doing? Yeah. So I always like to say that like everybody has to create their own definition, and that's like in the values work. Like that's a part of what I do. It's not just like here's what this word is and here's what it means. It's about really understanding what does it mean to you individually. So for me, because you asked me to define it for myself, when I think about joy and what it means to me, it means that I'm not feeling resistance in what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And so when I feel ease, ease leads to joy for me. Um, when, and, and what it feels like in my body is I feel relaxed. I feel, um, like my breath is, 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 um, I'm able to breathe deep. I am, um, my heart rate is slow. I'm not, um, because there's also frenetic joy and that's also lovely, right? When you're excited. So that's a part of it too, But the older I've got, the more experiences that I've gained under my belt, the more that I understand that um, it's, it's, it's the integration of like being in the moment and allowing new information and observations to show up, not from a place of judging like, oh, I wish I was here, but it's so right here. Like being in the moment is really... Because if you think about like, if you're out on a walk in nature, for example, 
and you're thinking about what you have to do when you get home, you're going to miss the sound of the leaves crunching under your feet. Hmm. You're not going to hear the birds chirping in the trees. You're not going to notice the children playing in the playground and their joy and their laughter. I think kids can be this really beautiful place to look at for like, what does joy look like? Or even love. They don't have the lenses of judgment like we do. The Mm. longer we're alive, the more language we have. And then the more language we have, the more judgment we learn. And kids, they don't care if, you know, they don't, they don't care if their parents don't want them to play anymore. They're just like, I'm going to play for 10 more minutes, right? They don't have a concept of 10 minutes until we start teaching them, right? That like what 10 minutes is and what happens if they don't honor the 10 minutes. So if you can think about just kids are so in the moment. And as we get older, we're not. Um, there's a great book by... Um, Don, Don Miguel Ruiz, he wrote The Four Agreements, um, and the book um, that I'm referring to is called The Voice of Knowledge, and that's really what he talks about is that, like, we're born as these beings of love, and we don't know anything else. We just trust that, like, when we come out of our, of you know, the our biological mother's body, that, like, we just trust that everything's going to be taken care of for us. And then we start learning that that may not always be true, but there is a core truth that uh, we, we are, we are here. We are alive in this moment is what matters the most. Yeah. I, a very, very well stated concept that, that um, yeah, like a, the younger you are when you're just a child, it, there's no concept of the future. There's no anxiety about it. Like, okay, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? There's, it, it's just, you take what's in front of you and enjoy that um, and move forward from there. It, it sounds it sounds as though what you're working on is just kind of simplifying things to, to take, uh, our world is so complex and we've got so many things going on and, you know, there's layer upon layer of expectations and concerns and, and all of that. And, you're just saying, okay, let's let's slow it down a little bit. Let's let's keep it simple. It, it, am I properly reading you? Yes. In fact, I actually in the corporate world, uh, I used to always hear about the Kiss method, and in the corporate world, they say Kiss stands for Keep It Simple, Stupid. And in my business, uh, I actually say that the Kiss method is about keeping it soulfully simple. I bring a lot of the word soul into the work that I do. Um, and like, in addition to my business profit coach, I run a virtual event called the soulful entrepreneur summit. And the, the more we can keep it soulfully simple. So the kiss, I like to say entrepreneurs who kiss succeed with more joy, right? So it is about keeping it simple. We overcomplicate things. And as business owners, we get so many inputs about you have to do this. You need to do this. You should do this. And then if you, if none of that brings you joy, then it's like, well, then I'm not going to succeed because these people over here said that this is the way that it works, but there's a million paths to everything. So all roads lead to Rome, right? So there are many ways to do that. Tell me a little bit more about that soulful concept because I, Soul seems to be kind of, I mean, pardon my bluntness on this. Like it's a, it's an artsy fartsy, ethereal kind of conceptual idea that doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem easily meshed with business, which is a, a numbers cut and dry, you know, black and white kind of experience. Can, Can you talk to me about the, the way in which those two concepts merge? Yeah. So, um, the way, remember you're talking to somebody who was literally trained in goal setting and helping managers do step goals and helping them trickle goals down. I mean like that, I was literally trained to condition people to understand what, how to set good goals 
and why that was important and what that meant if you didn't accomplish them. So the old way or the traditional way of business and goal setting is that um, when I have this, I will do this and then I will be this. Okay. Right. So when I, uh, I'll, I'll use like a small business owner, for example, when I have 10 clients in my business, then I will invest this money into my business and then I will be happy. Okay. You have to flip the script because the goal is the B, right? The goal is the happiness. Okay. And so that's always available, right? If you sit and look at what's really like, what are you trying to do in any goal that you're setting? The feeling that you're seeking is the real goal. Got it. And so that's the stuff that lights your soul on fire, right? So like if, if people are like, well, when I do that, when I have this and then I can do this and then go on this vacation, then I'm going to be really joyful, right? I mean, how many people do you hear that pour all of themselves into their work but, and they're doing it for their family? And then if you ask them to really think about what is it that your kids really want from you, they don't want a vacation. They want you. They want your love. They want your attention. They want their, they want your support. They want you to listen to them. And so, but you have to start by doing that with yourself before you can even worry about what it is for your family, because as grownups, and I don't have kids, but um, people in my HR job always, always kind of said like, you would make a great parent. I was like, well, my, my, my employees, I viewed my employees as my children. You have to do good for yourself and be aware of like, what does it look like for yourself before you worry about anybody else? Um, and I mean, I have so many stories where like once I helped an employee or even a business owner have that breakthrough, the way that they changed and the, and the boundaries that they were able to place around what was important to them and then honor them, we're not taught that. We're not taught why it's important to really tune into ourselves and what matters to us um, and then how to set up boundaries because we live in systems that have all these rules and expectations of, of what other people expect of you, what your job expects of you, what culture suspects of you or expects of you, what religion expects of you, what your family expects of you, instead of saying, huh, what if I started with myself and then communicated? That's the second part, right? It starts with awareness and then you have to make some decisions and then you have to communicate that with other people. And that's the hard part because that requires some humility to say, you know, I know that this isn't how I used to show up, but if I keep not showing up as myself, it's not going to be pretty at the end. And I remember like when I went through my training coach training program, I realized I was walking around with all these different masks on. And I was like, I don't want to carry these around anymore. And I started to put them down and it was hard and lots of things happened as a result of that. And I'm, I'm so grateful that all of that happened because your joy is yours and nothing external to you can can ever change that. Um, so, yeah, I I think that's a, a very powerful way to to end our conversation. Uh, listen, Allison, you've been wonderful. If people want to learn more about you and more about your coaching, um, what's the best way to find you, or how's the best way to connect? Yeah, so connections my top value, as I said. So uh, I know in the show notes you're going to have some links. So. I, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, Profit is my last name. It's spelled like making money, but with two Fs. So that's a good way to think about it. More is better. P-R-O-F-F-I-T coach. Um, and uh, I'd love for anybody that's listening to this that feels inspired to um, 
snag a time on my calendar. I think by connecting with other people, this is where we can have our own little moments of inspiration and joy and connection. And so I think your audience is full of people that I would love to connect with um, just based on the kind of energy you bring into the world, Rob. So um, yeah, so just reach out and connect with me through those links that are in the show notes and, and that would be fantastic. Wonderful, I will happily include all of those links. Um, it is time for three questions to establish your humanity. Are you ready for these, my friend? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. Um, what is the last movie that you watched? Um, the Pursuit of Happiness on the airplane with uh, with Will Smith. <laughs> Believe it or not, isn't that I, perfect? <laughs> I, yeah. Um, so there you go. It's the perfect so answer, right? So fitting. <laughs> um, would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? Ooh. It's a tie between uh, drive a car and ride a bike. It depends on where I am and, okay. and the mood that I'm in. Yeah. There you go. So, okay. Cause my imagination was like being you're, you're out in Colorado most of the time yes. and like to take a horseback ride through the mountains of Colorado seems um, like a, a great idea. Um, although that being said, I think I've only ever ridden a horse like four times in my entire life. And maybe someone who has more experience riding a horse says, trust me, just take the car or ride your bike. It's going to be a lot less. Uh, you'll be a lot less saddle sore when you're done. That's right. Yeah. And Fort Collins has like, it's like one of the most bikeable cities in the U S and so there's tons of biking trails, but we also have amazing mountain drives literally like 10 minutes outside of town. So that's actually one of my uh, favorite things to do is just hop in the car, roll down the windows, turn on some tunes. Then once I get in the mountains, I turn off the tunes and I just listen to all the amazing sounds in the mountains. So, okay. Got it. All right. This last question is going to be a little bit difficult for you. Okay. Okay. And I'm ready. Is, um, you and I both, um, both grew up in the Philadelphia area and the prototypical um, Philadelphia sandwich is a cheesesteak. And so my question for you is what is the number two sandwich on your list? Like, um, so if it, if it's not going to be a cheesesteak, what comes next? And that can be, it can go anywhere from like something that just goes between two pieces of bread to something that's on a hoagie, but whatever. Um, yes. And I said, um, in Philadelphia, we have hoagies. hoagies. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that's uh, what I was going to say. But, but, I, I would say an Italian hoagie uh, on an Amoroso roll with uh, provolone cheese. Uh, it's got to have, uh, you know, like all the delicious Italian meats on it. Lettuce, tomato, little drizzle of vinegar, olive oil, salt, pepper, oregano. That's it. There, you know, um, you're making my mouth water just just talking about it. it <laughs> Allison Prophet, thank you so much for being with me today. I appreciate um, you sharing of your expertise and you sharing of yourself as a person to all my listeners. I, hey, connect with me on social media. Um, the links are all in the show notes for where you can find me. Um, the podcast, it, it's LFSP podcast, as in learning from smart people podcast. Um, you can find me I'm on all the social media channels. In the meantime, I will remind you that when you stop learning, you stop living. Have a great day, everybody. 